Hey guys, this is Comic You Know and Comic Frontline, and today I'm doing Comic You Know episode 110. Uh, also, just a little update, next week I won't have a Comic You Know episode, it's a little bit of a week hiatus, uh, sorry about that. Guys, I'll be back to a regular schedule after that, uh, but let's talk about these comics. We, we're going to Worst Pick of the Week to Best Pick of the Week, and there are a good amount of comics this week, 22 books, so uh, let's get started. Number 22 is Fathom Blue, issue 3. Uh, you know, I've been wanting to read a lot more Aspen. I, I like that. It's a very female-driven company. Uh, and I actually really liked Fathom Blue, issue 1. I thought it was a lot of fun. It focused on the characters. You got to know them. Uh, even though the, the, the artwork is a bit sketchy and needs a lot more detail, um, I like the story for the most part for issue 1. Issue 2 dragged on a bit, and now issue, issue 3 obviously dragged on a lot. Um, I feel like it's losing the focus of what I really liked about issue 1 was we learned a lot about these characters, and now they all kind of feel two-dimensional. The only important character is this red-headed character. It's like everyone has to go against these main people who want to capture them or not capture them. Uh, and that's it, you know? They're, they're pretty two-dimensional, not really working as a team, and uh, I'm just not finding that that hook again that I found in issue one. I'll give the series maybe uh, two more issues, but I, I didn't. I'm not feeling what I felt with issue one. Uh, they really need to prove on the characters for this series. So I gave that uh, number twenty-two uh, two stars. Fathom Blue. Number twenty-one is. Inferno issue 4, uh, a series I, I liked for the most part in issue 1, I thought it had a good start, uh, and now it's just kind of boring me. It's one of those series for Secret Wars where it's like, I'm reading so many Secret Wars books, I'm not finding the point of this one. Um, if you're an Ileana fan, I think you'll like it, because uh, it digs deep into, you know, her devil side, I will say, her demon side. But other than that, it's uh, Cyclops being the same Cyclops, except now he's, he's kind of like Professor X, but totally personality not. He just looks like him. Um, because uh, he's upset with Colossus that he, he made the X-Men really fall down because he was trying to protect his sister. Cyclops is just not understanding, and now Colossus is finally realizing, oh, Oh man, I gotta, I gotta kill my sister. Uh, so that's pretty much the issue. It's pretty slow. Um, we do get some revelations that Ileana is gonna be working for Doom God, and you know there are definitely revelations here, but it's like too little, too late type thing. They should have happened like issue two, and it's happening in the second to last issue. Uh, artwork is pretty good though. <coughs> I do like the artwork. Um, the story, I think, is very much lacking. It just, um, it was a good series, and it's just way too long of a mini-series to really care. Uh, so, I, I'm obviously gonna re you know, finish this, because there's only one more issue left, but I've been pretty disappointed with Inferno. I'll get three stars, though. It's not a horrible issue, but it's a bit disappointing. Moving on to number 20, which is Postal Issue 6, uh, a series that has been up on top because I, I've been liking it. I think it's an under-the-radar series that not a lot of people are talking about. Uh, but this one takes a bit of a turn where we're not focusing on our main character, Mark, who I think is the most interesting, and we focus on his mother instead. You find out her motives and you know, what side she's playing on. Uh, and I thought she was less interesting than our main character. Um, I understand why they went this direction. Uh, definitely understand it has to play with, you know, Mark's father who's becoming a big role in Postal. But, uh, you know, we also get an interesting story with um, one of the townspeople learning that um, she got scarred. Uh, and now she kind of wants to kill herself. And it, it's an interesting um, story they go through that. Uh, and, and seeing how heartless uh, the Mark's mother is. Uh, but still, I do think it's more interesting with Mark and Mark's love interest I'm more interested in. So it's not a bad issue, but I thought this was a bit weaker than what we've been getting. So Postal Issue 6 gets three stars, and that's number 20. Moving on to number 19, which is Injustice Gods Among Us Year 4 Issue 8. Uh, this was really disappointing, honestly. Uh, there's something that happens in this issue where I was like, whoa, they just did that for shock value, and I think they took away one of their best characters. Uh, so what this issue um, entails is uh, it's really the same thing. Uh, Batman's retreating. Uh, Wonder Woman has to switch sides to Batman because of her dad, pretty much, because of, because of Zeus. And Superman's trying to figure out what, what his next step is going to be, and is actually talking to Lex about it. 
because they're friends in this universe. Uh, so they're they're trying to take next steps, and that's pretty much what's going on. Uh, and it seems like there's a big tidal wave coming because of Superman. So he does take that next step, and Wonder Woman doesn't believe that Clark's a bad guy, but he's ready to destroy, uh, you know, Paradise Island here. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. So there's definitely progression, but the thing I did not like about this issue is that they killed off Harley Quinn in like a second. Uh, you know, Harley is really upset about what happens to Billy. Um, you know, he's hurting, you know, uh, Zeus is hurting Billy, and he, she's really upset. He's like, oh, don't touch him, and then she's just zapped away by Zeus. Uh, I was like, whoa, this character is probably one of the best characters of this series. Just gets gone in one second. Uh, so I was disappointed with that. I was really upset with that. And I, I think that's why this, this issue went a little lower. Because it wasn't really a shock value. It was just like, whoa, you just took away one of your, your best characters. Okay. Uh, so I thought it was a bit weird. And also, again, the progression in the series is getting a bit slow. Um, it's the same thing. Oh, let's uh, retreat. Fight. Retreat. Fight. Uh, I just wanted the story to progress a bit more. And, and I think that goes to the point of maybe this series has overdone itself. Um, it's outrun its course, and I'm afraid to say that because I really do like this series, but when we get to these points of the issues, or these points of, uh, of the series, and of the, I guess, the miniseries of the year, uh, of the miniseries, I'm like, eh, maybe it's a bit too long. But then sometimes there's some really shocking issues where it goes back onto top five. Uh, but it's been a little, it's been a couple of months now that it's been on top five. So I do think it's been a little slower, and I, I do think they need to find an ending point because it just seems like it's going on to affinity and beyond at this point. Uh, so it does need to find an ending. So Injustice Gods Among Us, year four, issue eight, gets three stars. I was a bit disappointed with this one. All right, moving on to number, on to number 18, which is Secret Wars, Secret Love, Issue 1. Um, I was actually really excited for this issue because I'm a sucker for a good love story. Uh, but this issue, you know, like all these mini, uh, are short story type issues, there's some good ones and there's some bad ones. The bad thing about this is the price tag. It's four ninety nine, so I definitely had to rate it from the price tag. And the first story is about Daredevil and Karen Page, and I did not really care for it. I uh, didn't like the artwork. It felt like it was just fishing for the people who liked the the TV show, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I didn't really think that the story really brought too much. I guess it was targeting people that like the older Daredevil, but I, I didn't personally care for it. Second story was fun though. We get to see Robbie Reyes, uh, Ghost Rider. He has a love inch. Oh well, someone loves him, and also of course Kamala Khan. You have um, uh, Bruno who loves her, and they're they're both really worried that Robbie Reyes and Miss Marvel are gonna fall in love with each other, and then woo, they're just you know they're just friends, and that's what the issue's about. So it was a cool team up issue, uh, kind of these crushes feeling like oh no, we're gonna lose our crush, um, or we're gonna lose our best friends, and. Uh, it was fun. It was a fun little issue. I don't know if they're playing off the Ghost Rider thing. I guess this girl's from the Ghost Rider comic, but uh, I liked it. it was, like I said, it was a fun, fun portion. My favorite story had to be from um, Iron Fist, uh, Misty Knight, and, uh, and Jessica and Luke, uh, where we get to see marriage and how it works out and, you know, how sometimes marriage will fizzle and you're like, oh, is this working out? Or we only like each other because of A plus B because we have a kid. Uh, and then they realize, no, we do love each other and, you know, this, this is why. So uh, I really liked it and I love the artwork. It made me want this to be a real series. Uh, this was the best, but what was horrible about it was so short. I'm like, I kind of wish this was the whole issue. But loved it. Loved that issue. It was very cute. Uh, and then we have a Squirrel Girl issue, which was okay. It was cutesy, I guess. Um, if you like Squirrel Girl, um, it's there. I kind of got tired of the Squirrel Girl series, though. Uh, and then there's another one, which is a like, cutesy, like, all right, ants falling in love with each other. They're playing uh, Marvel heroes. Uh, it was okay. That was kind of fillerish, also. And that's why it went a little lower. There's a lot of fillerish stories, but the one I really liked was uh, the Iron Fist and, and um, and uh, Missy story. I thought that was the best one. Um, it, it, I think it really showed what love was all about, and uh, I, I enjoyed that a lot. But it was, it was short. There's a lot of other stories in there, so that's why it ended up being a bit lower. Um, but I, I think the two main stories were really good, um, but the other shorter stories were eh. And again, it is a heavy price tag, so that's why I ended up a bit lower. So Secret War, Secret Love, Issue 1 gets three stars. Now it's number 18, I want to say. 
Yes, that was number 18. So let's move on to number 17, which is House of M, Issue 1. Um, one of the newer Secret Wars books, and... Uh, it's pretty generic, I felt. Um, after being uh, a bit Secret Wars fatigued, uh, I feel like the, especially, I think this is the last issue one Secret Wars book. Um, this, I guess, was delayed a bit, and uh, like I said, especially after reading a lot of issue ones, it has to really blow me away. And um, I've read a lot of Secret Wars books already, and this didn't really blow me away. And I, I'm reading a lot of X-Men books, especially from Secret Wars, because I'm a big X-Men fan. And this didn't really add much. It was uh, Magneto, the mutants are ahead, they're in charge in this world, and the people that aren't mutants aren't. So it's kind of this vice versa. But the other stories weren't so interesting. It's like, you know, people backstabbing each other, uh, some family, um, I guess, some family disputes in this issue. Artwork was pretty good. I like the artwork, but uh, yeah, I don't think I'll pick up the next issue, though. Again, I just didn't have any hook here. It's not a bad issue, but after reading so much Secret Wars, um, you gotta pick and choose, and I don't know if I want to read more of the House of M, especially since I don't know how many issues it's gonna be. I guess it's gonna be three issues, or they're gonna double, you know, they're gonna double ship the, the book. I don't know. Um, so House of M, issue one, three stars. That was number 17, I want to say. That was number 17, so let's move on to number 16, which is Martian Manhunter, issue 3. Um, a book that's also a bit higher, uh, but this confused the hell, of, uh, hell out of me, this book. Uh, you know, I think they're doing it on purpose, where the writer's like, I'm going to confuse you now and then explain it all later, but it was confusing here. Uh, we get to see Biscuit, who we still don't know if he's Martian Manhunter or not. I think they kind of answered it in the end of this issue. Uh, there's also an FBI agent who's connected to Martian Manhunter somehow, and it seems like Martian Manhunter is going to kill him, or Biscuit's going to kill him, uh, and use his body. That's my theory, is that he's going to become John Jones, we know, is this FBI agent, uh, especially in the cartoon of Justice League, and uh, kill him. That's what I think is going to happen. But I'm still really confused of like how we get to see all these other white Martians, where they're like, Placed in this issue, there's a lot going on, and it's just very confusing. Uh, so that's why, but the artwork is good, and I do feel like this, this, this potential for the book, and I think that's why it's a bit higher than the other ones. The other ones didn't have as much potential. This one has potential, but if it's this confusing for the next couple issues, I don't know how I'm going to feel about the series. But I hope this confusion is for a reason. Uh, so that's number 16. Let's move on to number 15. Runaways issue three. Uh, you know, I'm not a huge fan of this Runaway series because I'm a huge fan of the past Runaway series. So I guess it's like, oh, I want my old Runaways, but okay, I guess I got these. And this is an okay series. You know, I think it's pretty fun. Um, it's definitely worth reading uh, if you like teen books. It's a bit abstract, the artwork. I think that pulls me away a bit. Uh, it's, what is it about? It's about these teens running away from their school and trying to figure out a way to run away, but... Bucky and some of the other students that are part of the school find them and they're trying to escape again. But there's a lot of little fun moments like um, Molly definitely being the best part of this book and probably the reason I'm really enjoying this book where Molly's like, yeah, I'm stronger than everyone. All right, we're in the Wild West. We need to get some guns. So Molly's the best part of this book. Uh, and yeah, you know, it's pretty fun. Um, is it the best Secret Wars book? No, but I think it is worth picking up. So Runaways issue three, um, Pretty good addition, 3.5 stars. Alright, we are moving on to number 14, which is Welcome Back Issue 1 from Boom. Uh, so, yes, this is a new book from Boom Studios, which I've been enjoying a, a good amount of their books. I think they've been doing a good job uh, with their stuff. And this was interesting. I thought it was something different. The artwork's a bit dark, so that's something I will say. Uh, but the story's interesting. Uh, we get to see this girl who is daughter of this, I guess, killer. They don't really describe who he is, but he's just a really bad person. Um, he's the daughter, she's the daughter of this killer, and, um, we get to see that, you know, she has friends, she has this, like, deadbeat boyfriend she breaks up with, she's life of the party, and she's thinks she's crazy. She takes pills, um, or, you know, she thinks she's mentally un unstable. 
Uh, so we get to see that, and uh, we actually realize that uh, she has different lives. She's lived different lives, and she knows this. And, you know, there's people that she has to fight in the future uh, because they also know that they've lived different lives, and they've always been enemies. So she's learning more about her different lives. And by the end of the issue, we get to see the father that was, you know, she loved her father, but he was a bad guy. Um, it actually ends up being this little girl and wants to help his daughter. Uh, so this is a really fun ending. Uh, again, the artwork kind of takes me out of it. That's one thing I thought took me out of it a little bit, but it's kind of a unique book. I was pretty interested in it. So uh, that cliffhanger got me interested. I will definitely be picking up issue two. I think it's only four issue miniseries, but it's a lot of fun. It's something original, and I recommend it. Welcome back, issue one. I, I recommend it. So uh, that gets three and a half stars. All right, moving on to number 13, which is Black Canary issue three. Um, yeah, so uh, I like this issue. It, it's punky, uh, but what I like about it is that it's um, intertwining with the new 52 Birds of Prey, which I, I'm not, you know, I didn't even read all the Birds of Prey series. I'm not a big fan, but I'm liking that it's intertwining with previous stories. Uh, so here we get to see that... Um, Black Mary learns a bit more about her powers, that it's actually connected to one of her bandmates. She meets up with her ex-husband, which is a lot of fun. And uh, I like the idea of her being very connected to her fighting and also when she's on stage. So there's a, a moment here where she's fighting and we see a, a flash of her on stage and how there is these same movements. And for some reason, I do like the artwork. I think it fits for uh, this tone of the story. The bandmates are fun, um, and overall it's a fun issue, and it has a good cliffhanger with Ditto being taken away um, by Bo Maeve. Uh, it's a pretty good issue. I liked it. Um, is it the best Black Canary story I've ever read? No, but I think it's something different, and uh, it's keeping me at least intrigued. So Black Canary issue 3 gets um, three and a half stars. Moving on to number... We're on to number 12, which I think people are going to be shocked how low this is, but Just League, issue 43. Um, I thought this was a bit of a slower issue, and I feel like it, it's become a little bit long, Dark Side War. I'm like, alright, so where are they going with this? It's a bit dark. Um, we get to see the aftermath of Batman being uh, a god, in a way. Uh, so that's interesting, and uh, Superman and Lex Luthor teams up here, and they're they're learning a little bit more about Darkseid's planet. Um, so they're doing that, and uh, Superman becomes a god in the end too. It seems like uh, in some weird way. Uh, so now there's two God Justice League people, uh, and that's the progression here. Uh, again, I thought this was a bit slower. I think there's a lot of talking in this issue. I kind of want to see a bit more um, movement throughout the issue. Uh, there's definitely things that happen here, but uh, I, I don't know if they're really interesting to me. It's a very dark um, story arc. Uh, so, yeah, I gave it three and a half stars. I just kind of want to see this um, arc move a bit faster, um, because I think it's been taking a little bit longer than I wanted it to. Uh, so Just League issue 43, good artwork, um, but I thought this was a bit weaker from the previous issues of Dark Side War. Moving on to number 11, I think we're up to, yes, we're on number 11, which is Wonder Woman issue 43. Uh, this is actually a different artist. Um, Finch's artwork I'm starting to get used to. Uh, this is lighter. I like the idea that it's lighter. Facial expressions could be a bit better. There's a lot of, like, weird facial expressions here. Uh, the story was pretty good. I like the story for the most part. We get to see Donna runs away. And also I want to say what's weird about this, uh, issue, or at least this artwork, is that I usually, comp not complain, but I usually say what I don't like about Finch's artwork is very dark in a lot of lines. This is, I feel like, too thin line. So it's like the complete opposite. It's like very thin lines, and then you have very darker lines for Finch's artwork. So I just like one of the middle aspect of that. Uh, so anyways, um... So this issue, we get to see Donna runs away, and she still believes, like, oh, what, what am I here for? And she wants to find out, should I die, should I not die? And Wonder Woman finds out that she killed more people, of course. Uh, trying to find out, um, 
while she trying to find out who she is. Uh, so she hasn't, you know, Wonder Woman doesn't find Donna in the end, uh, but we don't even know where Donna ends up. Also, we have that villain who wants to become a god and wants to defeat Wonder Woman, who attacks Wonder Woman, and Wonder Woman falls down by the end of the issue. So uh, we'll see what ends up with Donna in the next issue. Maybe she'll end up saving Wonder Woman. That's how the issue ends. Um, I do think there was a, a little bit too much story here. Um, I don't know if they needed to add that guy in the end. Uh, I feel like they could have concentrated just on Donna in this issue. Uh, but I, I like the issue uh, for the most part. I, I like where Donna's going and uh, I thought this was a good issue. I did like it, uh, last issue a bit more. Um, again, I do think the, the artwork's a bit too thin-lined, uh, but it was, it was good. It was a good progression, um, but I want more concentration on Donna. I guess more progression of um, Donna also. <coughs> so Wonder Woman issue 43 gets three and a half stars. Alright, so now we are moving on to number 10, which is Silk issue 6. Uh, good issue, you know. One thing I will say about Silk, though, is that this parent mystery, like, I want some more clues to that. It kind of feels like it's going to stand still, but it's setting up where Silk is going to go in the future, which is going to be teaming up with Black, uh, Black Cat. Uh, so Black Cat and Silk get a bit into a fight here uh, and actually rip Silk's hair. Uh, so she has to rip her own hair to get away from um, Black Cat. And uh, Silk also realizes that someone has been watching her in the bunker and she gets very upset about that. She knocks down everything in her house and she's like, oh wait, I actually do need help. So she gets that number of psychiatrists and is like, oh, you know, what, what's going to happen? The world going to end and the world's ending right behind her. Uh, I like your artwork a lot. I really think um, the cartooniness fits for the story, but I do think this was a bit on the slower side. Um, I do think it's building up to something else again. With Silk teaming up with Black Cat for some reason, uh, obviously her getting a therapist, uh, but I wanted more progression on that family aspect. I do feel like that story's been on standstill. I just wanted more clues here. Uh, so this is a bit of a slower issue, but definitely pointing in a right direction. So Silk issue 6 gets 3.5 stars. That's number 10. Moving on to number 9, which is... Spider-Verse issue 4. Uh, I like this issue. Even though I think the artwork is not the best, it's very simple, I guess is the best way to put it. I, I don't know how to describe it. It is thin line. The eye work is a bit weird when it gets shocked. Like over here, this is actually a good example. Uh, but I'm starting to get used to it because the story is so good. Uh, I really like the story for this book. Um, we get to see Gwen and Peter with no powers, which I don't really know which Peter this is. That's a bit on the confusing side. Uh, but they team up to go against Venom and realize, all right, Norman Osborn's not the best person. What do we do about it? And then the other half of the team um, also figuring out what do we do about Norman Osborn figuring out exactly how bad this guy is. So that's what's kind of going on with this issue. But my favorite part is with Spider-Gwen in this issue, uh, where Gwen, you know, she defeats Venom through a guitar. And uh, Peter's like, why are you taking so long? She's like, don't, I'm usually used to, you know, um, drums. So I thought that was cool. Uh, so I love the chemistry between Peter and Gwen. That was definitely the best part of this issue. But the other team members are great too, you know. Getting into Anya's head was fun. Um, and then also Norman obviously being this bigger villain. Um, I thought this was a really good build-up issue to the last issue of the miniseries. I'm super excited for Web Warriors also. Uh, and again, even though the artwork is not the strongest, I do have a lot of fun with this book. And Spider-Verse issue 4 gets 4 stars. Um, I, again, just a, it's a fun book. All right, moving on to number nine, which is Star Wars Kanan, The Last Padawan, issue five. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm not a big Star Wars fan. I'm getting there because I'm watching all the Star Wars movies there, you know, now, and I'm, I'm very excited for the new Star Wars movie. Um, but I won't say I'm a hardcore Star Wars fan. I'm a casual Star Wars fan now. Um, so I haven't you know, um, watched all of Star Wars Rebels, and I don't think you need to. Greg Wiseman makes this pleasant book where you don't really need to know that much about Star Wars to enjoy it. First of all, artwork is to die for. I mean, the artwork is so beautiful, the action sequences is great, and I feel like this series um, came, or at least uh, the story arc came full circle here, uh, where we get exactly um, the reason why Kanan calls himself, um, or why Caleb calls himself Kanan. 
and uh, that adventure and how he leaves loved ones here because he doesn't want to feel the pain he did when he he lost his um his master or, you know whatever they call it in um star wars i know there's a name <laughs> um but when uh you know she when he loses um yeah i would say master i guess for now um so yeah, you know, I, I really enjoyed that. Again, the artwork is beautiful, and in this full circleness of the issue is great. Um, we get to see the the, um, the troopers who uh, went against uh, Caleb in in the first issue. We see where they end up in this issue also. So it's a very solid book. You get to see where um, Caleb is now in Star Wars Rebels. Uh, so we're going to see more of a Star Wars Rebels connection. We're going to see those cast members in the next arc, which is cool. And I'll, I'll pick it up. I, I think it's a really, really cool arc. So if you're wondering who Caleb is, who Kanan was, uh, this is a great arc to, to pick up. Beautiful artwork. And I don't think you need to be a super Star Wars fan to enjoy this book. So Kanan issue 5 gets uh, 4 stars. We're up to number 7 now. We are up to number... Seven, which is Birthright issue ten, uh, a bit higher than the last issue. Uh, really enjoyed this, especially the opening where we get to learn a bit more about Mikey's mom. Where Mikey's mom comes face to face with Mikey's girlfriend, and you know the girlfriend wants to know where Mikey is, and she learns that Mikey, you know, lied about a couple of things, and then she's really having an open mind now, saying, all right, I guess all these things that my son has been saying is true, and this guy's really my son. Uh, and then she's shocked that the girl is pregnant with Mikey's, you know, daughter or son. And she's like, oh my god, I'm gonna be a grandmother. I don't think I'm ready for this. So I thought that was a great opening. And also a good moment in this issue is that we, we still have Mikey having some sort of this demon in his head, uh, and you don't really know what right and wrong is because you have an unreliable narrator. Uh, you don't know if he's saying the right thing when this, this monster or this, like, bright blue monster is trying to attack them. It's like, no, no, brother, stay away from that. You don't know if Mikey's the wrong one or if this monster was actually the right one. So I really like that unreliable narrator, um portion we have in this issue. Uh, great artwork, beautiful artwork, and I thought it was just a good progression to the story. So I thought this was a bit better than last issue. Uh, so four stars for me, and I can't wait to see where this series goes. That's Birthright issue 10. Moving on to number six, which is Van Helsing vs. Dracula issue one, another patch in miniseries. Um, I will say I, I was um, not loving the Van Helsing issue with um, Robin Hood, because I don't really know much about her character. I'm still relatively new to the Xenoscope universe. I guess I, I've been um, reading their books for about a year now, um, but I'm still relatively new, so I, didn't, I haven't read that much with Van Helsing. And here I think this was still very new reader-friendly, which I was happy to see. I don't know everything about Van, Hel uh, Van Helsing, but I definitely have an understanding of her. Uh, and she's going to, she has a friend, I guess she's met in another miniseries, um, whose fiancé is, um, possessed by something. And she has to find out exactly who this, who, who's possessing her. And it seems like it's connected to Dracula. And Hades, um, goes off, and Hades is, is her dark, but, you know, beautiful boyfriend. Um, but he, he used to run hell, and now, uh, and now they're boyfriend and girlfriend. And he, he kind of goes on his own route, and it seems like he's related to Dracula in some way. They, they've known each other in the past. So Hades has this dark past, uh, and now Van Helsing's like, oh, do I trust him or not? I thought we were in a good place, and now it doesn't really feel like we are. So it's in a, it has a really good cliffhanger, and uh, I thought it was a really interesting story. Um, very solid story. Got me interested. Good artwork. Great artwork. Um, and good cliffhanger. So uh, I'm excited to see where the, the miniseries goes. So I give that four stars, and that's number six. Moving on to number five, which is Superman Wonder Woman, issue 20. I had a blast with this issue. You know, I've been saying this for a while and I still stick into this. Superman and Wonder Woman is the best Superman book out there. Um, and you don't have to be a shipper of Superman and Wonder Woman. Uh, I personally don't love the relationship that much, but I like these two characters. And if you like these two characters, you'll like this book, I think. Um, because they don't force the romance on you too much. But if you like the romance, they have enough romance in the book that you'll like it. So I think it has a really good balance there. Um, what I really like about this book, um, in particular, is that you know, Superman, um, 
is having a, conver a conversation with the president and saying, well, why you don't trust me? Why are you, like, stealing my friends? And he's like, yeah, you know, you're right. We'll, we'll get your friends out and let's work this out. So they're working things out. And uh, on the other side is Wonder Woman trying to break out his friends because Wonder Woman cares for Clark. Um, and we, we see the different uh, points of views of Clark's friend. Uh, of course, Lana, knowing that Clark was Superman, she's not really upset. She's like, oh, of course I'll keep the secret. So Wonder Woman is using the last known truth on everybody. And we see everyone's reaction of Clark. And by the end, there's an awesome cliffhanger where we get to see... Um, Warner Woman's reaction to Lois. Uh, so we'll see exactly Lois's feelings on Clark um, in the next issue. And I, I thought that was a great ending. Uh, the only complaint I really had about this issue is the artwork could have been a bit better. Um, some examples of that is like here. You know, I, I just thought it could have added some more detail or something. I, I don't know why. I can't really put my uh, finger on it. But the, the artwork could have been a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, overall really really good story solid story um and it, i'm glad they added the supporting characters of superman and uh brought the twist of wonder woman in also uh it had a great cliffhanger and uh, i can't wait to read more so i think the next issue or a couple more issues we're going to see lana lois and wonder woman team up so i think that's gonna be a lot of fun uh but yeah solid issue and i can't wait to read more from this superman wonder woman issue 20 is number five and that got four stars all right so we are moving on to number four Number four is Invincible, issue 122. Uh, very solid issue. Uh, we get to see, finally, Adam Eve and uh, Mark back in the spotlight. And them still getting used to this planet. And uh, they're still not used to it. Adam Eve is literally hating this planet. She goes on her porch in the end of the issue. And she has this weird monster, I think, give birth to something on her porch. Or just spit up something and she's like I hate this planet uh, and then there's definitely a lot of um, different tensions in this issue with um, Omni-Man and Battle Beast and uh, Mark finding out about Omni-Man and Battle Beast still being out there uh, so those stories are definitely connecting now and um, Mark being on patrol a bit more seeing that uh, but yeah that's pretty much the issue it's uh a lot of the stuff we've already seen, but a lot more fun stuff too, which I, I enjoy with the, the family stuff. Um, but yeah, I think they're, I don't think they're going to last on this planet for too long, and I guess I like that. I'm kind of excited for them to go back on Earth, because you know they will. Uh, hopefully after all this robot stuff is done, but they're going to have to deal with robots. So they're going to be like, hey, let's deal with robot. I think that's what's going to end up happening, but we'll see. You never know with Invincible. Uh, but yeah, great. I thought it was a good issue. It's fun. It, it's not the best issue of Invincible, but it's still a very fun issue. Um, uh, that I think uh, at least progresses the Omni-Man and Battle Beast story. So Invincible Issue 122 has some fun moments, and I give that four stars, and that's number four. Moving on to number three, which is The Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows Issue 4. Um, this has been my pick of the week, I think two months in a row now. Uh, didn't quite make pick of the week, but it did make top five this week. Um, I like this issue. I do think this was a bit slower. It's definitely a point A to point B issue of, hey, let's save our, you know, my husband or my father. Um, it's a bit more of a focus on Annie because she's finally using her powers again, um, which is great. And she's excited to use it. But Mary Jane is fearful of it still. She doesn't want her to use her powers. But then she realizes, all right, Annie has to. Let's go save Peter. So that's kind of how the issue ends. Uh, and that's the whole issue. It's just like them realizing, all right, let's, as a family, save Peter. Uh, so good issue, like I said, solid, it's a lot of fun. I love the beginning because we get to see my name is Annie Mae Parker. I'm the daughter of Spider-Man. But, and, and then they have this whole entire thing. But that's so Mayday Parker, they're referencing Mayday. And I feel like Annie has a lot of different, um, aspects of Mayday, which is great. Uh, and Dance Lot does that on purpose. Um, she's May with red hair, I'm thinking. Uh, and also, the opening scene was actually a lot of fun because we get to see that Annie's like, I always wanted to use my powers, but for the longest time I felt like my middle name was Annie No, or my middle name was No. And I thought that was such a fun opening scene. Uh, so that was great. Uh, artwork is still on, like, a little bit on the bulgy side. I like it, but there's still something I, like, can't point my finger on that it's like, Still something there that's not perfect, but I, I like the artwork for the most part. Uh, so yeah, point A to point B issue, but still a lot of fun. If you're enjoying Renew Your Vows, this is another good addition. So four stars. And that's number three. Now we're moving on to number two. 
What is number two on the list? And that is Archie issue two. Damn, this series is good. I love it. Uh, Archie with this issue, Archie's trying to find a job. Not quite working. He keeps like almost killing himself every every chance he gets. But the reason he's trying to get this job is to fix his car. Because he lost his be best mechanic, which was Betty. And uh, after Archie's done fixing his mess, <laughs> and I actually meets Veronica along the way, uh, after he does all that, um, Betty is getting ready for her, her birthday party and we realize that Betty actually fixes his car for her or uh, she fixes his car for him uh, so that was really nice I, I love that that was such a good moment and uh, even though they're still fighting uh, Betty still cares for Archie we all know that and uh, Betty's you know trying to glamour herself up for a birthday party it's just not her and that was fun too and I think that was definitely more of a reference to um, I think Jughead said something about like oh well, I want to be myself type thing and, and Jughead does that in this issue so you actually get a bit of Jughead here too uh, but yeah, it's such a fun story. I love it. I love the little moments, you know, uh, Betty trying to get ready for a party and, you know, the, you know, her fixing Archie's car. Um, Archie just <laughs> being oblivious to the world. Uh, the introduction to Veronica. The beautiful, beautiful artwork. I can't say enough about this artwork. It's so well done. Uh, it's a shame that Fiona Staples will be leaving after next issue, but I'm, I'm still looking forward to seeing um, the next artist also. Beautiful book. I love it. Uh, it's so great. I gave it 4.5 stars. I um, guess my only complaint would be the construction stuff, the Archie story, did last a bit too long, but that's really my only complaint for it. So Archie issue 2 gets 4.5 stars, and that is number 2. Moving on to number 1, what is my pick of the week? And that is Revival issue 32. One of the best issues of Revival. Uh... This issue brings a lot of story full circle because uh, it's very much about the sisters. It's about Dana, it's about M, which I feel the series has not focused on in a really long time. And I feel like that's where the series is at its best. You know, they've just been doing their own thing. Um, here we, we have Dana literally at gunpoint with M. And M is ready to kill the guy who killed one of her friends. Um, ready ready to do this and and Dana's like this is not you why are you doing this and M's like I'm tired of being the good girl uh that's not me anymore uh, I just wanted she thinks this is the right thing uh so Dana you know there's a lot of um flashbacks which I love about this I feel like ever since I read the first issue of this book I'm like I kind of want to see flashbacks I want to see what they were like when they're their kids they keep referencing it but they're not showing us um finally in this issue which I think they utilized it perfectly uh we see flashbacks we see the flashbacks of who M was and who Dana was when they're kids uh Dana was a bitch she was uh she uh she didn't treat her sister right and even though her sister was begging for you know a female figure to look up to she you know, M just tattletailed on, on, um, Dana a lot. And, you know, Dana became pregnant, and they, they didn't show the pregnancy, oh, ah, no, they didn't show the pregnancy here, but obviously we know that. And, uh, we see that M is becoming Dana in so many ways, or at least the old Dana in this, in this really weird way, and it obviously means something. And, uh, we see that, I mean, because I guess because Dana was M's um, female figure, and she she wants to be Dana in a lot of ways, and Dana turns like M in a lot of ways because she becomes a goody two shoes uh, uh, when she becomes older. Um, you know, good mother, you know, cop um, like her father. And here we just see them reverse roles, and that's why M wears the hoodie uh, that Dana wore when she was growing up, and we just see this emotional roller coaster. Why are they doing these things? Um, by the end of the issue, Dana is literally in a fist fight with M. It's like because she thinks M killed the guy, um, and she's in a fist fight. M's face is all beat up. We uh, hopefully get a scene, and we get to see that with the flashbacks of this happening before, and the reason that they fight each other, the reason M tattletailed on. Uh, Dana was because she loved her, and vice versa. The reason Dana's beating up M right now is because she loved her. She's like, I don't want you to turn into this person. And uh, the father ends up coming towards the end and finding out that M is <coughs> a revival. So, oh my god, I've been waiting for that for so long. And we just have an interesting family reunion in the end of this issue. Uh, beautiful artwork and just a beautiful issue. A emotional roller coaster and the issue I've been waiting for for a really long time for Revival. Um, 
So yeah, Revival Issue 32 gets a perfect 5 stars, and this is 100% my pick of the week. It is such a great issue. Read Revival if you're not reading it. Supposedly next issue is um, a jumping on point. So hope you guys enjoyed. This is Comic Uno. Um, let me know in the comments below what was your pick of the week, your worst pick of the week, and everything in between. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Don't forget to like my Facebook page. Also, description below, there's um, a link for um, my Twitter. Well, I mentioned Twitter and Facebook, I think. But there's a link for my comic book, Like Father, Like Daughter. And don't forget to like the Facebook page for Like Father, Like Daughter. I'll see you guys later. Bye.